Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. In our last video, we left off with killing virtually everyone in Strawberry and breaking Micah out of jail. We are currently not so popular in Strawberry. Anyways, I spawned on the side of the river because Arthur had to get a good swim in after that mass genocide of cops. I started off by heading to my nearest mission, which was another debt collecting for Strauss. The person I had to collect debt from this time was Thomas Downs. Once I got there, just like before when I collected debt from Mr. Robel, I befriended his dog. Actually, I kind of just stared at it, but we gained a mutual respect for each other. I then found Mr. Downs, and instead of calling to him like the game suggested, I menacingly hopped the guy's fence, staring him down. He then tried to knock me out with a rake. I then grabbed the rake with my cat-like reflexes and punched the frail old man like the badass that I am. I beat on the man a bit, asking where his debt was. He eventually told me he didn't have his debt, and he was already trying to get the money. He then fell to the ground, and I yelled at his wife and kid. They ran to his aid, and Arthur walked away. Yeah, now that I think about it, I don't really know how I feel about that. I kind of just beat up on a sick man and bullied him for his debt money, even when we didn't really need it in the first place. Actually, what am I talking about? That's the American dream right there. As I was teleported back to camp, I set my waypoint to Blackwater where I'm wanted dead or alive. This is because I had to go and save Sean, who was going to be hanged if I didn't get to him first. On my way though, this guy asked me for help. Being the kind citizen that you all know I am, I stopped for the man and having the luck that I have, he pulled a gun on me. I merely looked at him in disappointment for a few seconds and swiftly put him to sleep. I then hit his body like it was a Hitman 2 mission and was on my way again. As I was peacefully on my way with my horse, I was once again interrupted, this time much more rudely. As I was riding, these bounty hunters came up shooting at me and one of them went balls to the wall, ramming right into my horse. I mean, I got easily killed, but I'm not even mad. That guy was dedicated as hell. But after that, I respawned and went over to Blackwater. But I found as I was about to head past the upper Montana River, that I was wanted dead or alive beyond this point. I was wanted so much that there were people patrolling around looking for me. Despite this, I snuck in and found my friend's makeshift camp. I then cuddled in next to them, getting real cozy with the boys. We scouted Blackwater, but didn't find Sean. We found that Sean was being transported up the upper Montana, and we rode over. As promised, we found the boat riding along, and when it stopped, I used my binoculars and found some bounty hunters taking in Sean and roughing him up a bit. We began to head down there, and when we got down, Trelawney distracted the two bounty hunters while me and Javier silently slit their throats. I also try to sneak up on some other bounty hunters ahead, but that doesn't really work, and this spirals into a shootout. We get through these bounty hunters, and we get up to this camp where most of them reside. I get through these guys as well, and we find Sean. I look him up and down, and decide to loot the bodies of the bounty hunters before cutting them down. I'm told to cut Sean down quickly before more of the guys show up, and I continue to loot the bodies, disregarding the warning. Luckily, nothing comes of this warning and I shoot Sean's rope and cut him loose. With that, the boys once again leave me stranded and I complete the mission. I also gain this tomahawk which is pretty cool. After the mission, I find a stranger mission readily available to me. I find this animal photographer who creepily takes a photo of me that he intends to use for December 1st if you know what I mean. Then a coyote steals the animal lover's bag and I chase the thing down to get it back. I do eventually catch up to it after an intense 15 second chase and I bring it back to the man. Instead of compensating me, he just thanks me, and being the greedy bitch that I am, expecting a reward, I angrily stare at the man in front of his camera. I then throw a tomahawk at his camera, and the man runs away terrified. That'll show him. I then head over to collect the debt of Chick Matthews, which is part of the long list of people who owe money to Herr Strauss. I ask this guy if he is the one that goes by the name Chick Matthews, and he tells me that Matthews is the guy that is about to run off with his horse. I chase the man down and catch up to him killing his horse. After getting to him, he very very calmly says, God dang it. This map will take you to the money and gives me the debt right over the corpse of his horse. Heartwarming. He then runs away quickly and narrowly escapes my attempt at killing him with my tomahawk. I look at the money he gave me and realize it was actually a treasure map that leads to his real debt money. I hunt the money down and find it chilling in a tree. That is yet another debt collected. After that successful robbery, I set my course to the final debt, Lily Mallet, who happens to be right next to another mission. When I got there, I asked this guy if he knew Lily, and in the process, I grinded up his innards by running him over with my horse. Then 
then with his blended insides, he tried to fight me, which didn't really pan out for him. After that, I find Lily sitting with her cousin slash husband. I asked her for the money and she sent her goon after me. I came out victorious once again, unscathed after a brutal fight. I then took the debt money from him and walked over to Lily, sticking my tongue out at her laughing. Next, I rode over to my next mission, which was with Hosea. Hosea introduced me to his new pal and he almost immediately canceled the friendship when Hosea stopped him, telling him that he would prove himself. Giving him a chance, he told Jose about a stagecoach that he wanted us to steal, specifically his cousin-in-law's stagecoach. He told us that there was money in the house we could steal, and if we did all that successfully, he would give Jose the old sloppy toppy. We then went on our way, excited for the adventure and the potential reward. When we got there, Jose told me that he would distract the guys as I made it into the home and stole all their shit. This works tremendously, and my goal is to steal a total of 45 bucks. After searching through the house, I get a tiny bit more, especially after finding $150 in the fireplace. After my haul, I make my way to this barn where the stagecoach is. Jose then comes in and we ride away letting the wind flow in our luscious, beautiful hair. The guys notice what we're doing and literally look at us, which has to be the weakest attempt at trying to stop someone from robbing you. Anyways, we make it out unscathed and we arrive back at the original spot. I also got to keep all of the money I stole from the place, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I then went back to camp and went into Dutch's little tent where I was reading up on some books. As I was browsing, Dutch got a little pissy pants on me and fucking shoved me out of there. I guess he didn't want me soaking up all of that knowledge, knowledge he had. I then went right back in and opened another book because I'm just that petty. I then went over to Javier because there was an activity I could do where I could rob a homestead with him. And I see money, so why the hell not? I started up the mission and we rode to this little camp with a bunch of guys. We scout the place out and crouch up to the camp. Eventually, as we get settled in though, Javier tells me he's going to create a little distraction and that he would get things going. Javier then starts a fucking forest fire. I guess that's a little enough distraction for the guys at the camp to get preoccupied with and we catch them off guard and start shooting at them. We have a bit of a long epic battle and after the storm dies down, I degrade the lifeless corpses by once again looting all their bodies. We then find the money we're looking for under this little storage pile. Off that money, I get a cool 175, which brings me up to about 460 bucks. I'm actually starting to get up in the funds. After this, I head to my only mission icon, which is a letter that waits for me in camp. I find the letter waiting for me, and to sum it up, it's my old lover telling me where she currently resides, and she asked me to come over to do some mingling, if you know what I'm saying. When I arrive at the place, I knock on the door, still on edge, and I'm met with a clay figure that looks like it just sprung to life. Like, seriously, who the hell saw this character model and was like, no, yeah, this looks great. This looks like a real person. Like, seriously, after seeing this monstrosity greet me, I'm never sleeping again. I'm then met with the real woman, Arthur's old lover. We have some nostalgic conversation about our old Among Us dates, and then she suddenly brings up about how her brother joined a cult, and she wants me to save him. Well, shit, that took a dark turn real quick. Although I'm a bad boy with the dirt bike, I reluctantly decide to help Mary. She tells me where her brother is, and I go there, arriving at a cliff's edge. Here, I find some Roblox esports champions, along with Mary's brother. These guys are startled by my sudden presence and circle around each other, saying, Shell of safety. Shell of safety. I mean, what a bunch of alpha chads. I then pace around while I talk to them about getting Mary's brother back because this displays all of my manliness and how manly and intimidating I am. I then start crouching in anger and eventually lose my patience strangling the man. I then try to convince Jamie to come back home and he runs away. Like always, I catch up to him with my awesome horse, which I have named Bertha by the way, and I once again try to take him home. After shooting the gun he put to his own head, he's super chill and we talk about the struggles of Dakar current society. I then bring him back to Mary and we have an epic reunion. They literally then just hop on a train and leave me. Can't trust these people anymore. One minute they chillin' and the next they say, yeah, let's bounce, Arthur sucks. It kinda hurts, not gonna lie. After my cult adventure, I went back to camp and decided to buy some things in the ledger once again. Now, every penny I make during this video will be spent towards the ledger because I don't want to just get good equipment for myself, but I want to see my entire camp thrive like an ever-growing economic superpower, except 
except it's a camp with a bunch of outlaws. So I buy better medicine, provisions, and ammunition. I also buy a chicken coop so I can finally have something other than criminals to talk to. I then talk to John and he tells me about an idea he has for an upcoming train robbery. He tells me if we can get oil, we can put it on the tracks forcing the train drivers to stop. Arthur decides this would be a good time to start bullying John for his crazy problem solving skills and intellect. Arthur really is good at building relationships. Of course, he does go along with the plan and yet again, I set out on another journey. I arrive at the place where I am supposed to steal a wagon and it's surrounded by guards. I try to sneak in through the side and this does not bode well for me. Well, that was depressing. Next time, I try a much more direct approach when I realize that the wagon is already heading out somewhere, and I tried to breach the walls for no reason. The awesome thing is that it's just chillin' completely empty. So I ride the wagon all the way to the drop-off point, which is a half-built wooden cabin. After I drop off the wagon for the first time, I can't call my horse because it is out of range. I do what any logical person would do, and I throw a knife through this guy's head so I can borrow his horse for maybe five minutes. I then hear some screaming the way I'm going, and I nope the shit out of that, and head in a different direction. I eventually find this escaped prisoner along the path, having trouble with some shackles, and he asked me to shoot them off, deciding to stand right in the bushes, so it's kind of a fun little gamble when I shoot. Who knows, maybe I'll get a little too excited and kneecap him. He then has an orgasm. Just shoot the damn- Oh! Oh, oh yes! Yes! Perfect! Ah, thank you! I then continue my journey back to camp and tell John about my heist. He is happy about my success. Abigail then comes up to me and asks me to spend some time with Jack, the little shit freeloader that does nothing but pick his nose and play all day. I ask him if he wants to go fishing with his old pal Arthur and he happily accepts. I take him to a nearby river and we begin to fish. After fishing for a few minutes, Jack gets bored and I get carried away fishing to my heart's content. After I'm finished, I see Jack has made a necklace for his mom when some Pinkertons come up to us, basically detectives. This prune tells me the obvious fact that I'm wanted and that they want Dutch. They know about the big heist we pulled back in Blackwater before we had to split. He tells me a proposition. I bring in Dutch and I'm a free man. Arthur is obviously not going for this and the Pinkertons leave, leaving this deal on my conscience. We go back up to the camp and Arthur notifies Dutch about the situation. Arthur kind of looks around like a crack addict in withdrawal and tells me to stay calm. I then go back to the half-built cabin where I dropped off that wagon and I find this Lucky Charms guy shooting at it. We plan on pulling a big heist, so after having a conversation, we catch some Z's before the robbery. We prop the wagon right up on the tracks just as planned, and after the train stops, we begin to rob it. We go through the cars one by one, robbing rich tourists and taking a whole bunch of money. After that, though, we're interrupted by some cops, which obviously leads to a huge gunfight. Luckily, we're able to slip away, and although we only took like 200 bucks, our total take is a hefty $1,500, and I personally take 187. Once again, not bad money. This brings me back to about 250 bucks, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I waste no time setting my waypoint to my next mission, which is with Micah. On my way, I find this guy that got bit by a snake and needs me to suck the wound to get the venom out. This is sus and I shoot the man. I am not getting scammed today. I then find Micah and make quite the entrance. Hey Arthur, good to see you. Why? You want rescuing again, dear? 
Micah tells me he has a plan for me and tells me about an upcoming robbery we should do. And then we go out and do it with absolutely no planning. Smart. So we head up to the spot where we can scout the area where we would be robbing a banking coach. We waited for them to come into town and we went down to get it. Micah then immediately blew our cover, screaming that this was in fact a robbery. We then killed all of the people on and around the coach and took it. Once again, I appreciate how absolutely zero planning went into this whole thing and it went perfect. Oh shit, that's not good. Well, after these bag-headed assholes destroyed our rightfully owned coach, we killed them and I then calmly looted their bodies while the therapeutic sounds of chirping birds played in the background. How peaceful. We did end up breaking open the coach and still got a bit of money, so it wasn't all lost. I even got $300 individually, which is actually my biggest payout yet. So after that, I was randomly approached by Javier, who tells me Bill got caught by some bounty men. So I follow Javier to this camp where Bill was taken, and we swiftly kill everyone, catching this tent on fire in the process. And I'm pretty proud of myself because this battle took a total of like 30 seconds, and now I got some new fresh bodies to loot. It's a good day. After I was rudely interrupted, I went back to my original destination, which was in Valentine with John. He tells me to follow him and it's a bit sketchy because I don't usually trust people who don't wash their hair, but I followed him anyways. When I ask him where we're going, he tells me we're just picking up something, so this is growing increasingly sketchier. So I hitch my horse to a post and he tells me to buy a sniper rifle, which I do for free because there's a sale going on in the store. We then go up to this cliff's edge where John reveals to me that the reason we're doing all this is to herd some sheep. What the fuck, John? I could have been doing something nice and productive, but I'm all the way out here hurting livestock. He then tells me that if we can get this sheep to an auction, we can make some money and I'm immediately on board. I'm going to skip this part because it's literally me herding sheep, so that's boring stuff. Eventually, we get the sheep to the auctioneer and he tries to blackmail us. He wants 25% of the profit and we negotiate it down to 18% in a matter of seconds. Still clenching our buttholes from anger, we go to the saloon where Dutch and Strauss are waiting for us. As Dutch and I take a shot of celebration, Leviticus Cornwall, that rich dude we robbed in the beginning of the series, at that train confronts us. This is not good. He even has Strauss and John hostage. We go out there with our hands up and I slowly pull my gun out, starting yet again, another action-packed shootout. Although we're completely surrounded, we get away because our enemies suck ass at killing and their bullets are the equivalent of stones lightly being tossed at us, judging by how many Arthur took. Or maybe Arthur is just made of metal. Each is equally plausible. So I rush back to camp and Dutch has the camp packed up, informing me that we're leaving. He tells me to scout a new spot for the group and I bring Charles with me. We go to our potential spot and we find a dead body so that's probably a good omen for the future. As we look around we find an abandoned camp and after closer inspection some scared German family. They tell us through poor English that some men took their father. We go to the area that the girl pointed to and we find the man. Unfortunately we are also ambushed by some people and out of the goodness of my very pure not dead and cold heart we kill the bad people and save the man. We then reunite him with his family and take the land as our camp and that my friends is the end of chapter 2 of Red Dead Redemption 2. Wow, this has been a long episode, and if you watched all the way through here and enjoyed the video, please leave a comment suggesting what you would like to see next, or just anything in general. Anyways, with that, I will see you all in the next video.